to you by. We're here to build because at the end of the day, we're truly Ugandan. Yes, a very good evening to you tuned into UBC TV. Welcome to News Tonight, the very first of its kind this first day of March 2022. We'll start with a look at the top stories. Yes, thank you so much for joining in. My name is Michael Jordan Lukomwa, and Elizabeth Nakakoni joins us for sign language interpretation. In a first story this evening, President Yuri Kaguta Museveni has today received a special message from President Teodoro Obiang Gwema Mbasogo of the Republic of Equatorial Guinea. The message was delivered to him by the Vice President, Her Excellency Teodoro Nguema Mangi, who met him at State House in Debe. The two leaders later discussed various issues affecting their respective countries and the continent, including strengthening their cooperation in peace, security, and socio-economic transformation, saying problems in Africa can be defeated if they all worked together. President Museveni thanked President Obiang Nguema for sending the delegation. He told the delegation that capacity building is very essential and Uganda is willing to cooperate with Equatorial Guinea. He revealed to the delegation that when fighting Idi Amin, he trained 28 young men, 28 young people from Mozambique, who later became core in the building of the current Uganda army and subsequently uh, trained others. The president, Museveni, also noted to the delegation that Uganda is on the front line of fighting hostile groups, including those from Sudan and Somalia. He said that much as Uganda wants to help but also to teach a lesson that Africa belongs to Africans. The problem is the politics and the wrong type of army that is not oriented to fight and defend their country and defend it cheaply. Uganda is already supporting Equatorial Guinea in building capacity and professionalization of the West African Nations Army. Vice President Teodoro Nguema Mang, uh, who is on a two-day working visit to Uganda, commended President Museveni for his support to Equatorial Guinea and for Africa. He said that the current global changes and instability in parts of Africa are a challenge to the whole continent. The Department of Education Standards in the Ministry of Education, I beg your pardon, uh, talk property, look for people who can add value on what they're doing. President Yuri Kaguta Museveni has told officials from the Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities, uh, the Uganda Tourism Board and Tourism Sector stakeholders who met him this afternoon at State House in Entebbe. The president, who was meeting the officials over several contentious issues, including government handling of investment in marketing tourism, which markets to focus on marketing initiatives, the Pearl of Africa Tourism Expo brand, and the Dubai Expo scaling and capacity building and conservation initiatives agreed to a request by two operators for him to visit one of the uh, one of the national parks as part of government efforts to promote tourism the private tour operators also want inclusion on the board of Uganda Airlines, Uganda Tourism Board and Uganda Investment Authority, Export Promotions Board and the Petroleum Authority, among others. The meeting was attended by, among others, a State Minister for Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities, Martin Mugara uh, Behinduka, the Permanent Secretary Doreen Katusime, former Minister of Lands and Housing, who is now Chairman, Uganda Tourism Board, Daudi Migereko, Uganda Tourism Board, CEO, Lilia Jarova, and the leadership of the Uganda Hotel Owners Association and that of the Association of Uganda Tour Operators. Uh, tourism, Uganda's biggest export, contributing 1.6 billion Uganda shillings to Uganda's GDP and accounts for over 660,000 jobs as of 2019. The sector was, however, seriously affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, 
with the airport closure and lockdown. Sylvie Tomosime of Akashia Safaris, the board chair of the Association of Tour Operators, urged the president to intervene on communities living in the national parks, including fishermen, pastoralists, and agriculturalists who are in constant conflict with wildlife. So these are the Msangu. Now, the, 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 uh, and when you go to promote, why do you leave the, the, the Banaini chain to behind? Why do you leave the, the actual stakeholders behind? And, and the officials are the ones who go. And that is the representative of the ministry, uh, of Minister of. Away from State House and TV, the Department of Education Standards in the Ministry of Education and Sports will inspect schools to check compliance with guidelines on fire outbreaks prevention. State Minister for Primary Education, Joyce Moriko Kaduchu, says that the ministry will, re will reissue circulars to schools on basic requirements and minimum standards to be followed. COVID-19 period, the country never experienced school fire outbreak. Schools have now been reopened for seven weeks, and 10 fire outbreaks have so far been reported, with the recent one being a fire that gutted Bilal Secondary School in the wee hours of Monday morning. Ministry of Education and Sports attributes this to schools that are not licensed to operate as boarding. So the education standard is going to embark on inspection. And this is going to be serious, really. We are going to ensure schools put in place these minimum standards and the requirement that can enable the children to be safe. And if they cannot, we rather close the school and the children go to the neighboring schools. April 2008, Buddha Junior Dormitory was set ablaze and 19 children lost their lives. In the month of January, February and March 2009, seven schools that include Chibibi Secondary School in Piji, Masaka Islamic School, Kakungul Memorial, Maracha Secondary School in Arua, Kingsway on Entebbe Road, Pariet Preparatory Mixed School in Chitintale, Chikonda Primary School in Kaboya and Hoima got burnt. In April 2016, a fire set ablaze a dormitory leading to the postponement of end of second term exams. Semya Weldon College in Barara was burnt. April 2017, a boys' dormitory at Mother Manjeri Primary School, Chirinya Boyogerere, caught fire, destroying property worth millions of shillings. In 2018, Bahesi Hostel housing in Makerere Business School and Mary Stewart Makerere University caught fire. And 2019, Wairaka College, Rugarama Nursing School and Midwifery also experienced a fire outbreak. According to police, most of these reports were caused by arson and yet no individual has been proved guilty for such an offense. The Metron for Watchmen and Former head teacher for Budo Junior School are still on trial for criminal negligence. Some fire outbreaks are also suspected to be acts of indiscipline by students in an expression of anger to school administrators. Every school should provide counseling sessions mm. to students and staffs. Mm. Some of the students may be mentally mm. disturbed. Some of them may be, uh, some of them might have domestic mm. problem. Others may be having chronic infections mm. like HIV and AIDS. Mm. Others may have mental disease stress mm. that needs regular counseling. Counsel others may be on drugs. Mm. With the resurgency of fires being in the period of COVID-19, Minister Kaduchu says the heads of the schools should observe the COVID-19 guidelines and minimum standard for fire outbreaks issued in 2008 putting in place firefighting measures equipments mm. 
Yes. It may be expensive, but mm. this is a critical issue. Mm. If they don't put in place mm. firefighting measures mm. that can detect the flame, mm. can detect the heat, or there should be some communication method mm. such that when there is a danger, either you blow a whistle, mm. you ring a bell, or you do something. Put it very clear that schools should have control access to the premises. Mm. Every school should be in position to have a secure and non-porous a perimeter fence, a mm. perimeter fence that cannot allow somebody to jump, jump over. over. Primary schools have been advised to have in place a management committee and secondary board of governors to enforce the requirements. We are going to send this circular once again to all the schools. The circular will be sent to all the parents and all the people of Uganda. And we are also requesting our parents, please help us to identify some of these gaps. The fire outbreaks are rarely in this school, but boarding and the Ministry of Education technical team is to soon issue a statement on the way forward. I'm Navka Farida in Kampala. The judiciary has started using electronic court case management information systems, a system which is going to operate in a first manner starting with eight courts. Chief Justice Alfonso Winnie called upon court users and judicial officers to embrace the system. I've started to use the electronic court case management information system, ICMIS, in filing and handling cases online. The system that will operate in clusters will first be applied in Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, High Court Divisions, among others. The Chief Justice Alfonso Winido launched the system. To launch the ECMIS Go Live this first day of March 2022. Chief Justice Alfonso Winido urged court users and stakeholders to embrace the electronic court case management information system in dispensing justice. We will do what it takes to ensure that with Uganda does not the Ugandan judiciary does not remain in the second industrial revolution. The court stakeholders must familiarize themselves with the use of ICT in order to meaningfully deliver justice services in the new world. This call goes to all the court users, more particularly the lawyers, the judicial officers, the court registry staff, the self-represented litigants, the law enforcement officers, and all other persons de desiring to use court services. He cited the need for constant trainings on using the system. We'll be keen to know where pitfalls are. We'll be keen to know where there are limitations. We'll be keen to know where real difficulties are for the purpose of finding solutions. Uh, I would like to assure you that uh, we are committed to meeting and overcoming whatever challenges will come our way until the objective of entering a new environment is achieved. Aspects of the electronic court case management information system, ICMIS, will help court users and stakeholders. We thought it was essential that we moved from a paper docket to a digital file to ensure that we put an end to this question of lost files, lost papers. The system that has been developed is a fully efficient system that automates and tracks all aspects of the case life cycle from initial filing through to disposition. Joseph Sinabulia, the Judicial Senior Information Technology Officer, explains how the system will be operating. If you've been summoned, the notification will come to you that you've been summoned by court on this date and at this time. So if there is a court hearing, all those notifications will be automatically sent out by the system, both on email and SMS, and a copy will be maintained in your profiles. If there is a hearing that has been set on a particular day before a particular judge, that event will be automatically attached to this calendar. Natongo Rebecca compiled the report.
Minister of State for Relief, Disaster Preparedness and Refugees, Anyakun Eskakapila, says that government has come out to address floods before the onset of rains. As heavy rain falls approach in eastern and northeastern regions, more people are affected by floods. Statistics show that districts of Kasese, Katakui, Amuria, Kampala, Butalija, Sironko, Bududa, Manafwa, Kumi, and Toroko are affected by floods annually. Many gardens and houses are likely to be affected by the water logging and the windstorms. This will create the need for emergency relief food and non-food items to support the high-risk and exposed communities. Minister of State for Relief, Disaster Preparedness and Refugees, Anyakon Esther, says government will relocate settlers in the most likely disaster-prone areas when the rainy season starts. The plan is when we resettle you from a slope, like for example, Bududa, and we take you to a place where you are going to establish you for your safety. The land where you've been living previously will definitely belong to government and Ministry of Environment will work together with us to ensure that that land is, is, is owned by government and then we shall do uh, environmental related activities. These rains are expected in the month of March, April and May. This quarter, government has secured 2 billion shillings from the Ministry of Finance and also President Museveni directed 50 million US dollars to support the cause. Office of the Prime Minister Disaster Preparedness and Management Department together with the District Disaster Management Committees, shall carry out assessments and also issue advisories to the communities in high-risk areas to temporarily relocate uh, uh, relocation. Priority one is in this respect will be to support families in safe, uh, safer areas to provide refugee for relatives and also neighbors in the high-risk zones. Floods has so far displaced 2,216 people and government has procured land in both Kayunga and Kasese to relocate its people. Story compiled by Irene Faith Nantongo for UBC News. The now bigger MBs only on MTN. When you load a daily band of 250 shillings, you no longer get 15 MBs, you get 30 MBs. For 500 shillings, you no longer get 40 MBs, you get 80 MBs. For 1,000 shillings, it's no longer 100 MBs, it's 180 MBs. Dial star 150 star 10 hash or use the My MTN app to load bigger daily bundles only on MTN. MTN is regulated by the Uganda Communications Commission. Hmm. Yeah, talk show. In March 2018, Total Energies launched the Welders Training and Certification Program aimed at improving the employability of Ugandans from the Albertine region and East African crude oil pipeline areas. Uh, GIZ E4D project is working with Total Energies where we are targeting to train at the end of it 350 welders and we're expected to train more. I see myself working maybe in the oil and gas industry, being an international certified welder because I'll have acquired the skills. I'm a lady but doing something which is generally perceived to be for men. It makes you actually feel special, it makes you feel wow. I am ready to support the oil and gas sector by being a quality welder. I thank you Total and I thank the government of Uganda. Total Energy's EP Uganda is committed to the empowerment of Ugandans to take an active part in the overall development of the oil project in Uganda. Start the year off with my Airtel 4G smartphone! You get to enjoy free 1 GB data valid for a month and 100% bonus data every month for 3 months at only 250,000 Uganda shillings. This includes free data spread over 3 months worth 86,500 Uganda shillings making the effective price of the 4G phone 163,500 Uganda shillings only. Visit the nearest Airtel shop and get one today. Airtel, the smartphone network.
National Medical Stores is a government agency mandated to buy, store and distribute medicines and medical supplies to government health facilities in Uganda. For Ugandans that we serve, help us serve you better by taking your individual responsibility seriously. Report theft of government medicines and medical supplies to the nearest police station or to the State House Health Monitoring Unit. Do not pay for any medicines or medical supplies labeled Government of Uganda not for sale. Do all that is within your means to stop all preventable diseases including COVID-19. Continue observing the Ministry of Health Standard Operating Procedures, SOPs, including wearing a face mask whenever you are in public spaces. Visit a designated health facility to receive your COVID-19 vaccination and a booster dose for those that are eligible. Prevention is better than cure. National Medical Stores, passionate about your life. Are you a consumer? Do you purchase movable second-hand items such as motor vehicles, household items, and many others? Don't be cheated. Carry out a search on the simple registry and verify whether the property you are buying has been used to secure a loan. Simple is the security interest in movable property registry system. It is an online registry hosted by URSB for registration of security interests on movable property. For more information, call us on our toll-free number 0800 or log on to Simple. Dot .ursb dot go dot ug simple safer lending easier borrowing this message was brought to you by Uganda Registration Services Bureau enjoy convenience today with Airtel Money School Pay dial star 185 hash select option 6 school fees select option 2 school pay select option 1 pay fees enter student number Enter the amount. Enter the PIN number to complete payment. Beat the back to school hustle today. Pay school fees conveniently using Airtel Money. Airtel Money. Instant, secure, borderless. Raising voices. Like other fathers across Uganda, I'm standing up to send no to violence against children. I commit to give my children a violence-free childhood. As fathers, we can make Uganda safer for our children. I promise to speak out when I see virus. In this time of COVID, what is your promise to the children of Uganda? Because a violence-free childhood is everyone's right. Raising Voices. Your MBs are now bigger MBs only on MTN. When you load a daily band of 250 shillings, you no longer get 15 MBs, you get 30 MBs. For 500 shillings, you no longer get 40 MBs, you get 80 MBs. For 1,000 shillings, it's no longer 100 MBs, it's 180 MBs. Dial star 150 star 10 hash or use the My MTN app to load bigger daily bundles only on MTN. MTN is regulated by the Uganda Communications Commission. Come back from the break. It's UBC Business News tonight. Parliament has asked government to respond to the public outcry over the escalating commodity prices in the country. Commodity prices continue to rise, with traders attributing it to the high fuel prices that have been high since January this year. However, State Minister for Finance, Henry Musasi, has told Parliament that the Ministry of Finance will study the skyrocketing commodity prices and report to Parliament next week. The prices of essential commodities like rice, sugar, soap, cooking oil, among others, are sharply rising with the traders saying it is precipitated by an earlier increase in the fuel prices that have remained so since January this year. When we talked about the fuel prices, we were given confidence from the bench that side that they will come up with a conclusive report on the monitoring mechanism they have used on fuel dealers about the soaring prices but up to now it's a month and we see nothing as the minister gets up to respond 
Can you tell us exactly what we can do? If the problem is the import duty, then we can actually do away with the import duty because... However, Shema Municipality MP Dixon Kateshumba told the parliament that the reason of high fuel prices is far-fetched from the root cause of the current commodity prices. According to Kateshumba, fuel prices were hiked due to the slow pace in the PCR COVID clearance of truck drivers, a matter that has since been addressed by parliament. Now parliament wants answers on what exactly government is doing to calm the situation before it worsens. One example is DAP that normally we use for maize. Previously, right honorable speaker, DAP has been at 1,000. It's now at 60,000. So farmers are now wondering what to do next. So we want the government to tell us what is going to happen. You are introducing the parish development model. And uh, how are you going to deal with this problem? The MP's submissions on the up hazards of commodity prices in the market are not cast in stone. Junior Minister in charge of general duties at the Ministry of Finance, Henry Musasizi, says government is still puzzled with the skyrocketing prices in the commodities in the market, despite government intervention to lower the CBR. But what's the Deputy Speaker's ruling on the subject matter? Salt is, the prices of salt is up, the price of, of sugar of uh, cooking oil. This is something you need to act on very, very fast. You may talk of analysis, but you need to act on it very, very fast. Sorry, because it is affecting a local person down there. It may not affect us here, but it is affecting a local person down there because of their income. Their income does not change like us. Shamem Naiga, Gloria Gutabinji, UBC News. In the world of sport, with just four days to the 2022 Masaza Gabu Ganda football tournament final, excitement and buzz is already on as the public waits Buwekula and Buddu to battle. The final, expected to be grasped by the Kabaka Ronald Muenda Mutebi II, will be preceded by the loser's game between Maukota and Bulemezi. <laughs> One of Uganda's most renowned sports philanthropist, Suleiman Kiwanuka, has led the way in enlivening this Saturday's Masazaga Uganda football final. Kiwanuka, who hails from Nakifuma in Mukono district, has come in handy to spice up the final at the St. Mary Stadium Kitende. First of all, I would like to thank the Kingdom of Uganda uh, uh, to, you know, uh, playing a major role in development, sports development, especially in football, that I understand better. Uh, first of all, today, I came to, 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 to be handed over the tickets that I bought for my people in Achifuma. I bought uh, 100 tickets for my people and uh, I'm also pledging $100 for each goal that is going to be scored on the finals. Sale of match day tickets has started for this belated 2021 Masaza Gabuganda football final between Buwekula and Buddu that is expected to be graced by Kabaka Ronald Muenda Mutebi II. I've assured the entire country, that as far as security is concerned, we have done our real best. And I want on behalf of the kingdom to ensure all our fans that security is well set, we are prepared to protect you and all your variables. But always emphasize that security starts with you. Make sure you don't move with so many things. Make sure you come sober and ready just to enjoy the match. Uh, besides the security component, the tickets are out on sale. We have got tickets worth 20,000 shillings. They are going to look in this color. You are going to have this wristband. Whoever will access the stadium is going to have this. And then 50,000 shillings is going to be white in color and of this nature. Buddu looks for its second title, while Buwekula in its second final targets a pioneer championship. John Burns, Sentamo, reporting. is all we had for you at this moment. We'll get back with a big arrangement at 10 p.m. Do not miss. My name is Michael Jadon Lukomoa with Elizabeth Nakakuna and the whole team. Let's catch you then. But Daphne Kawasita has a weather forecast report that you do not have to miss here.
pleasure having you for this weather update. I'm Daphne Kawasita Samba from Uganda National Meteorological Authority. Most parts of the country today had a sunny intervals, though some areas had cloudy conditions with other areas having thunder rains and these rains that we're receiving these days are really destructive, so really be careful for those thunder rains. According to a report that received today, Kasasi reported the highest amount of rainfall of 4.4 millimeters. Chitugum, we had 1.6 millimeters and then Jinja, we had 1.2 millimeters.